And I have a good reason for that. I mean, it's a good reason for me. It's probably not a good reason for you. Hard rock. As I said in an earlier episode, I'm absolutely here to judge, but I'm only here for like 20 minutes. Hard rock. Seven-year-olds are 50-50 at best for wiping their own ass. Hard rock. Cool. The one time in my entire life I lip up to a cop, I got a good one. Hard rock. Like bail reform should be the poster child for like a good idea. Uh, let's do it as badly as we possibly can. Hard rock. You can definitely, if you wanted to, I wouldn't. Hard rock lunch box. What is up, everybody? It is time for another edition of the Hard Rock Lunchbox and, of course, the top 20 if you're watching at home. It is 420, and if I had given that any thought whatsoever, of course I would have had a Snoop song ready for you, but I didn't, mainly because it's 420 and I plum forgot. I'm also not a really big weed guy. I'm trying, actually. Like, I'm trying to get back into weed. I've actually had this conversation with my kids a lot. Like, I... My, like, my drug use is a long and storied past, and I've had those conversations because I, I, as a parent, think it's important to have those conversations open and honestly with your kids so they know that they can come to you. And my kind of famous thing is I, qu- I had quit doing mescaline by the time I got out of junior high school, which is says quite a bit about my home life, I would imagine. But uh, the reality of it is, is I started getting uh, migraines or light migraines light grains from uh, from smoking weed by my senior year of high school. And then I tried it one more time, my friend's apartment, when he was going to Columbia, uh, and I got such a headache that I couldn't get rid of it for days, and I stopped smoking pot altogether for about, I don't know, a million years. It's really only been kind of recently that I kind of got back into it. And I do love, like, the whole resurgence of drug culture, pot culture specifically. Like, it's an interesting... It's an interesting thing to watch from a sociological perspective, point of view, like, for sure. Like, it, it, it's very funny to watch, like, a lot of stuff that's going on with drugs, and maybe we'll talk about it here at the beginning, because I really didn't do any uh, prep for today's show, and I have a good reason for that. I mean, it's a good reason for me. It's probably not a good reason for you, but what are you going to do? Um, but yeah, it is 420. Uh, that is traditionally the day you are, I think, supposed to leave work early, smoke some pot, and listen to the Hard Rock Lunchbox. But I don't know all the rules, man. I really don't. What I do know is I got some housekeeping. Yeah. It's light housekeeping, which means that there is a brand new episode of the Top 20 out on StrangerHood TV today. Uh, it's the inaccurate Texan, and it's where we talk about the judge from uh, Texas that decided he would figure out what's good for women across the country by um, removing the ability to the, removing the clearance that the FDA gave to Miss Prefacone. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but it's the uh, it's the drug that uh, basically would allow people to access. It's, it's it's the act. It's the mail order access and telemedicine access. That mail order, telemedicine access to one of the drugs that allows you to do uh, in-home abortions. Uh, generally speaking, within the you know six to eight week window that a lot of states seem to be okay with, uh, forcing women then to go in for a much more dangerous and much later procedure. Like whatever your stance on abortion, like if you're trying to do it before there's an actual child in there, and I am not interested in debating this with anybody at any time whatsoever uh, when a child is actually in there, but when it still sells, it is much easier and much safer for everybody to just enforce a miscarriage and stuff like that. Like that happens all the time and people are losing their goddamn minds about it. And the, and the I said last week, and that's why this episode is important, is because this dude's ruling. This good, this dude is a total douche, by the way. Like as now they're bringing up like archival stuff. It's so funny and like like his hearing was you know recorded on C-SPAN or whatever. And you see Senator Blumenthal like uh, asking him questions about stuff that he's said, and he's like, "Well, I don't remember saying that." And he's like, "Yeah, it's in the brief you wrote, dude." Like because he's just you know he said. Um, what was it, LGBTQ, oh no, gay marriage protections would lead the country to tyranny. He put that in a legal document. 
Sounds like just the kind of guy the Republicans want on a federal court in Texas. Am I right? Of course. Anyway, this asshole. So check that out. Uh, there's lots more going on with that. There's been a stay by the Supreme Court on that ruling, which is really unusual because Samuel Alito is the one that actually hears the emergency um, the emergency requests coming out of the Fifth Court, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. And I was very surprised that he even bothered to issue a stay, but he did. So I guess we'll see. I mean, the one thing that I thought was interesting about it is the company drug company that makes it was like hey man you can't just up and do that because you don't like the drug and they're right you're not allowed to do that in this country at all so they joined with the biden administration and looking for this stay and they're going to try and reverse this thing and if it was just the biden if it was just the biden administration i'm sure as sunshine that uh the supreme court would uh just allow the texas ruling to stand but now that there's a business a big one uh, involved in this because you know drug manufacturers are not not really mom and pop stores anymore so they've got a lot of money and they've got a lot of lawyers so it'll be interesting to kind of see what happens because they are making a commerce argument they honestly care less about the because uh, they didn't make their drug for abortion their, their drug is actually for other things it just happens to do that kind of like viagra was like for heart stuff and it just happened to make your dick hard so win-win for everybody except you know People that don't want their guys' dicks to be hard, I guess. I mean, I'm not here to judge. Well, <laughs> as I said in an earlier episode, I'm absolutely here to judge. But I'm only here for like 20 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Um, talking about some of the absolute ridiculous stuff the Republicans are doing. Check out that. Like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate all that. Don't forget all the other stuff you can catch on uh, Stranger TV this past Monday. Uh, the, the Bimp guys phoned it in, as it were, and did like a uh, best of kind of their special performances over the past two years. I'm kidding. I thought it was a great show, but I'm still going to make fun of them because why not? Uh, also, they had discussions of drinks from last night, which I did not see. Uh, AJ from Werewolves was supposed to be on that. I, I don't know if it happened. Uh, feel free to check over at Stranger TV uh, for yourself. Uh, they're going over on the Twitch thing. Um, Twitch twitch.tv slash bacon is my pod uh, you can check that out and you can check out producer extraordinaire David Caggiano uh, explaining to Mike and Jimmy why this chord needs to go up or that chord needs to go down or why it needs to be slower or faster and all the things that producers do and then of course tomorrow you get jo- Jonathan from Outline and Color who I was actually going to grab today uh, not Jonathan, uh, Outline and Color but I just didn't uh, just didn't uh, just didn't get around to it, mainly because I suck. Upcoming shows, Rebel 9 will be at Mr. Beery's on June 16th. Uh, we're dragging along with us uh, Craving Strange, Something Heavy, and Born of Scars, so that'll be a good show. Oh, man. Also, I think Chris Waterbury has a new video out. This is like his five favorite chocolate bar. I haven't had a chance to watch it. I'll probably listen to it tonight on my way to practice, but... Anyway, I've wasted enough time. Stranger TV, do the thing, watch the thing, like the thing, all that other good stuff. So, I really, I really don't know what to talk about because I'm, I'm, I am desperate to get away. <laughs> I'm desperate to get away from some of this political stuff, but it's like we keep getting back into it, and I, and I don't. I don't think it should be political. I don't think the things that we're discussing should be political issues. I honestly think they should probably be more social issues. Like, what are we doing here? Like, and what? Do, why are we doing it? And what do we want to do with this stuff? Like, I, I don't understand why so much of this stuff is such a big deal to so many people. And, and I keep finding myself on so many different sides of so many different arguments. And uh, granted, I do not know exhaustively all the details of every side of every argument because I really can only delve into the things that concern me and mine, right? Like, but something important to me and, and something 
someone in my in my orbit like yeah like that's the stuff I'm gonna I'm gonna really research and, and of course stuff that I'm curious about like I'm seeing a lot more stuff about uh, you know transgender rights and you know all that other and I, I gotta tell you like just like right off the bat like there's a lot of misinformation I'm seeing like there's a lot of stuff being pushed that says like you know seven-year-olds can determine whether or not they want to have uh, trans or gender affirming treatments and stuff like that. Like as a parent, man, seven year olds are 50, 50 at best for wiping their own ass. Like I don't feel like seven year olds can do that on their own. And I think it's a really big kind of issue like to, to sort of, you know, look into, but to make like blanket statements like that seems wrong. And I delved into it a little bit and it doesn't look like that happened like at all. <laughs> like, that's apparently like not what they're saying, or things are being taken out of context. Like I think it was more along the lines of like, you know, seven-year-olds can express things, but like seven-year-olds do not have the mental capacity to make those kinds of life-changing decisions. Like you know, like I said, like seven-year-olds have bathroom issues. A lot of seven-year-olds want to marry their cousins. Well, I mean, I guess if you're in if you're in Kentucky, that's fine. But also, a lot of seven-year-olds want to be He-Man. So I, I don't know like where to where to kind of go from that. and. I think it was a really, really interesting example of the way misinformation spreads. Um, and this is a completely benign, non-political one, which is what I thought was kind of interesting. So um, I was coming home from rehearsal um, Tuesday night and on the news. Like, I'll lis- a lot of times I'll listen to the news, like, after rehearsal because it's not music. And if that sounds weird, like, I've just been, like, playing for, like, you know, three, four hours or whatever it is. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'm into it, sometimes I'm not, sometimes I just want some quiet. But a lot of times I'll listen to the news because I don't get to watch a lot of news anymore. Like, a, like I famously watch, like, Pix 11 so I can see what my man Byron Miranda has in store for me on the weather. And it looks like it's going to suck on Sunday, by the way. I got a 9 a.m. Long Island Cup game on grass in Comac. Like, I just... Not feeling it. Not feeling it, Byron. But, um, you know, so for other news and stuff, like, just quick. That's why I listen to 1010. Like, that whole, like, give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. Like, I'll give you, like, 20 minutes. Like, let's move this along. Um, But uh, I'll listen. But they were talking about how they passed um, they passed a law in New York State just recently. Uh, And they're putting in speed cameras at work zones. Now, whatever you think about that, like, let's just break that down. Like, if I don't, don't bring in any, like, if you haven't heard of it yet, Awesome. Then you're perfect for this particular experiment that I want to do. So pretend like, and if you have heard of it, just pretend like you have it for a second. So they're going to put in like speed cameras and work zones. Um, the reason they're doing that is because people speed. If anybody's been on Northern State Parkway, Long Island Expressway, Southern State Parkway, even Sunrise Highway, people speed here. Like I am often driving the speed limit be perfectly honest i'm probably going a few miles above the speed limit like you know i'm not a teetotaler but like you know i do drive a long time like late at night and like the opportunities to pull me over are just like big especially if i'm in like van jose like it's not like it's like subtly goes by you know what i'm saying so i just don't speed uh when the loop parkway is open and it'll be open probably in may or june again like lido beach boulevard like lido boulevard is one of the most pulley over places on the planet and i grew up in northport where i was connected to the actual most pulley over place on earth which is uh, ash roken avenue trying to get up to eaton's neck like that that shit was 30 miles an hour when i was in high school and they nailed your ass all the time and the reason they did that is because Ash Roken actually had its own police force. Of, yeah, two or three cop cars. But you know how they paid for it? With those tickets. I don't know if you've ever driven 30 miles an hour up to Eaton's Neck, man. It is a much... Like, you're you're better off walking it. It is a long drive. And the worst part about it is it's a complete straight road. It's, it's a complete strip. Flat, like low... No turns whatsoever. Like, it is just begging for a little fast and furious action. But I grew up there, so I know that. So I drive, you know, the speed limit. Because I'm just not asking for trouble. And honestly, like, even as a white guy, like, 
I don't have the worries that a lot of minorities have getting pulled over, but man, I have definitely been messed with by the police. I don't know why, because I'm very courteous every single time I get pulled over, although in my older age, I have definitely pushed that limit a, a, a little bit. Like, I remember once at my old studio, like, it was snowing, and I was drive, uh, pulling into my old studio, and I was down the driveway, and the cops pulled in behind me. And, you know, I went with full attitude because I wasn't even in the car anymore. And I was le- I was ready for a fight. I don't think I was going to fight the Suffolk County Police Department. But I was so irritated that this had just happened. And I walked up. I was like, what's the problem? And the guy was like, oh, we just thought you were stuck and wanted to see if you needed any assistance. And I'm like, cool. The one time in my entire life I lip up to a cop, I got a good one. Nice job, DJ. Dickhead. What was I saying? Oh, perfect case of mis- misinformation. So I listened to the news. I cannot believe how far off track my stories go sometimes. It's just bananas. Like, we should, like, have a clicker. Like, nope. Turn. Left turn. Fractal. Blah, blah, blah. And he's back. All right, cool. Um, so, people speed on Long Island. They absolutely do. If you think if you think they don't, you're either a fool or you're a liar or you're just not paying attention. So I'll drive, like, maybe, like, 60 miles an hour on Sun State Parkway. Every single time I get blown past by somebody, I'm guessing, in the 90s, several people. Because there's usually not just one. There's usually one and then their asshole friend behind them and they're going to go. And then they're just going to fly. I don't know where all the police are because, like, honestly, I could pay for the Suffolk County Police Department and the New York State Troopers with the number of uh, infractions I see. And I don't drive anywhere, ever. Like, hardly ever. Uh, but my point is, is that the people speed and people speed in work zones. And a lot of times the reason people speed in work zones is because there's usually some sort of bottlenecking before and then they get to where they're going and then they take off like as fast as they can once it goes to like single file and because they're, they're running late and they go. But also like when there's not a lot of traffic, like in the late night hours, like when they do a lot of this work, people are flying by like work, work zones are usually like 40 miles an hour, right? I, I've never seen anybody without a flat tire do 40 miles an hour on the Sun State Parkway. I don't think it's physically possible. I think just the, the curves alone will centrifugally force you to go faster. And, that, and they tried all this stuff. Like when they started adding, the, they have the new law, new-ish law, where if you, like, you see any service vehicles, like ambulance or fire, basically anything with lights, you actually have to move over uh, and come out of that lane. Like people don't do that either. Or people are causing accidents trying to do that. It's a bad idea. Typical New York, right? Like a decent idea and a horrible execution. Like bail reform should be the poster child for like a good idea. Uh, let's do it as badly as we possibly can. That's what we do great here. Anyway. I cannot believe I'm still talking about this. So anyway, um, so speed cameras. So what they did is they, they, they slow it down. Like you'll, you'll notice there's usually a sign that says slow down like 40, 45 miles an hour. And generally, pe- generally speaking, people just fly right by it. And what they're saying and the, the, the traffic safety board or department is saying is that I guess they're saying that people have gotten hit and... I tried to Google that, like, and look up any statistics, and I could find nothing within the past couple years where people have gotten hit while they were actually working their job. Um, There's been some accidents, like, where they've gotten hurt on the job that don't seem to be related, but I think it's the fact that they don't like people flying by at such high rates of speed that they finally push through this thing where there are they are going to be putting uh, traffic cameras, speed cameras, at these work sites. And they announced it... um, and I, I personally think it's a, it's a cash grab because anytime you see New York City trying to give you a fine, it's a cash grab. Like it's trying to make up for some taxes that they lost because they decided to pay $7 billion for Buffalo Bills Stadium or whatever. Uh, you know, And we could talk about like that kind of bullshit another time. But generally speaking, as a New Yorker and a left-leaning New Yorker, like rest assured, the way New York funds most of its stuff is through taxes, whether it's fees or tickets or liens or whatever. Um but that's, that's, that's one of the ways that we do it here. So, um, go team. Um, but, um, so here's the whole point of this incredibly long, boring story. By the way, just for my fellow Long Islanders, they're going to be on Northern State Parkway, Southern State Parkway, the Expressway, and Sunrise Highway. So if you see a work zone, you're probably going to see a camera. So what they said on the news, like what the Department of Transportation, the DOT actually said, this is where we're going to be putting the cameras. 
We're gonna, they're going to be like car mounted. They're just speed cameras. They're just at work zones, and they're mainly to protect our workers. So people stop doing it. Tickets will start at fifty bucks. Now it's fifty bucks. I'm sure it's an eighty-five dollar admin fee. There's the New York cash grab. If you didn't recognize it, uh, so that's that's what's happening. And that was the news. And I thought nothing else about it except like that's pretty lame. You know, that's super lame. Like it's really. It's lame that people are speeding by people that are actually working for a living, like, and putting them in danger. Like, that's one thing. Like, and that, that bothers me, but it's definitely bothering me that, like, New York's going to go after all this money this way. But that's what they're doing. So, apparently, according to a post I saw today, <laughs> apparently people are thinking, like, they're putting them everywhere and they're using all these traffic cameras and all that other stuff because people just speak without knowing anything. They heard a little bit of something and they just start saying something else. And it's just unbelievable to me how this game of telephone has just blown up into this, you know, everything's a light, you know, a traffic camera, There's always, everything's a red light. No, it's not. It's exactly what they said it was. It's exactly what the Department of Transportation said it was going to be. It's exactly what the news reported. The only place that the news is getting it wrong is by dumb fucks that are just repeating stupid stuff, mainly on social media, that isn't true. And even dumber people taking that as gospel. And if that is not the perfect picture of everything that's been going on lately, then I don't know what is. And if you want to know why Fox News just settled a three-quarter of a billion dollar lawsuit because they lied and they knew they were lying about the Dominion machines and they knew they were lying about election rigging and election interference. They knew they were lying and they were doing it anyway. That's actually the news lying to you. It doesn't mean all the news is lying to you. It means Fox News is lying to you because Fox isn't news. It's entertainment. But when you get actual news and you get actual sources, you know what you get? Actual news. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. It's crazy bananas. Just real quick, in other New York State news, the New York State Board of Regents uh, this week unanimously decided to ban all Native American mascot and Native American names uh, from high school, uh, from from public school teams. And the reason they did that is because it's becoming a growing movement in this country that people don't want to do that anymore. Native Americans, like, they don't like things that they consider to be slanderous language like they don't want to hear it all the time and you can make an argument right like you can make an argument that it's not designed to offend blah 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 blah, all these other things but at the end of the day something like washington redskins like redskins was offensive they deemed it offensive they said it was offensive for years that's why washington changed its name that should be an easy one right i did happen to see where somebody was complaining that they were going to have to change the name sachem and all I could think, like, seriously, you got to read the News 12 comments sometimes. All I could think is, like, I don't know how dumb you have to be to know that you're not changing the name of your town. But also, like, Sachem isn't a racial slur. It is the name of a tribe of Native Americans. It's okay. Like, that is okay. And just highlights how so stupid so many people are. And all I could think was, like, how do we make this clear to people, right? Like, Sachem was a tribe. Like, that was that's that's fine. Most of the weird names, and I'm using weird because they're not English, um, like most of the weird names to, like, other people, like Hop Hog and, like, Copeg and, like, Montauk, like, these are all Native American names. And they're either named after tribes or they're named after, um, you know, like, places on the land that they referred to them as uh like that that's that's fine and that is not slanderous right now i was trying to come up with the best example i could think of and like i know that you're kind of allowed to use like the white racial slurs without getting into any trouble so i figured i would go with that whereas you can definitely if you wanted to i wouldn't but if you wanted to you could refer to your high school as the Ronkonkoma Italians. Maybe that's your football team. The Ronkonkoma Italians. There's nothing wrong with that because Italians are, in fact, Italian. But as soon as you start going like the Ronkonkoma Guineas, 
somebody could be offended by that. And you could argue whether or not somebody's going to be offended by that could be silly, but it's not up to you, right? And there's no need to do it. But I'm hoping I'm at least making this a clear argument, right? Like, what was the thing in in Madagascar? Was it Madagascar when Sasha Baron Cohen was like, the New York pansies, right? Like, that's bad. Like, nobody wants that, right? Like, I don't want that. But I'm hoping I'm making it clear, at least for people that don't understand how this works, like why some names are okay and why some names aren't. And I'm just going to complete this by saying the one thing I did hear, it was actually one of the, one of the, I want to say controller, but it wasn't, uh, one of the dudes from New York that was talking about it. He's like, we're in a place now where we're actually calling things like, Na- you're using names that make people uncomfortable unnecessarily. And yeah, I don't need to pander or, you know, like make sure everything's okay for everybody. Like, I am not a snowflake. I am not somebody that gets upset by stuff like that. Most of the people I know are not either. A lot of people I know are like, eh, whatever. Like, it's not even the biggest deal. Like, I'm much more worried about the increase in my car insurance than use of Native American names. But what I do understand or Native American um, slanders. But what I do understand is that there's just no reason to do it. Like, you're you're doing it and offending somebody just because. And doesn't that seem like something we don't really want to do? Like, going out of your way to offend people? You don't see me going around calling Republicans snowflakes and pussies and pansies, do you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got good news for any fans of uh, of Skindred. I may have a lead on that boom we've been looking for. 